I went to the Kam Kao Market from Baka. It's not very far, but it's on a hazardous mountain road. The bus was filled with mattresses, filled. A few bodies like my own clinging to the sides. There were another 20 mattresses on the top. I don't know if they were destined for China or where. They were brand new and uh, wrapped in plastic. It was a Saturday market. When we pulled up, the sight was just incredible. In the distance, I could see this extending ridge of a mountain. There's no town there. It's just a market on a mountain. And it stretches out along the ridge of the mountain. The flower Hmong people. It was like looking at a mountain in bloom. It was so spectacular, it even took me a while to get up uh, the desire to go in there, just looking at it from a distance, plus looking at the um, motor, motor scooters, tons of motor scooters there. I finally edged in. It was packed, mainly all tribal people, all pressing very closely together. I I had my purse going across, the purse I've carried for years, a, a, a money purse, like a little backpacking purse. I carry it across one shoulder because we know that's safe, right? Instead of over one arm. That was safe. I should have had it inside my clothes. And I should never have had my credit cards inside of it. I've never done that. I always have my credit cards inside my money belt. But for some reason. Okay, I wasn't paying any attention to that little bag, which was kind of over my left hip. But I was um, going in and out of my camera bag. Sometimes still camera, sometimes my video camera, very tightly squeezed together. And suddenly I looked down and dangling, I can't part with this, it's like an umbilical cord, where my purse had once been dangled this. That, that's what I did. <laughs> I couldn't do anything. I just stood there. I couldn't believe this had happened, let alone try to start working on the ramifications of it. The fact that somebody had come up and cut that off of me. People, little by little, saw this statue standing there and started backing off. And I, I just, I just, boy, pointed to this and went like this and, and looked at them and they got the picture all right. Nobody spoke any English, of course. They got the picture, but what could they do? Nothing. Nobody came up and said, oh, that's too bad. Oh, oh. Mimicking that they were sorry or anything. There was nothing like that. They were, they were just looking at me and kind of shaking their heads. That was, I wanted to go back to Baka. I couldn't handle it. I couldn't move. When it finally, when I finally like realized somebody had actually probably been checking me out for quite a while. <laughs> I look open, I looked vulnerable. I was open and vulnerable. That's what you get. I have to find something special to do with this. So, I found a way to get back to Baka. Oh my, that could be him. I didn't feel like lingering. <laughs>